Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about JavaScript. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you think that websites should be progressive and that they should work without JavaScript enabled? So the short answer is mostly no. Sometimes yes, but it depends on who your audience is. So the way that I see look at this is pretty much that I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little bit tired at uh, when it comes to listening to these evangelists for Mozilla and Google and so forth. These advocates who say that, oh, you know, the web should be about accessibility. It's supposed to be about everybody's like just equal and like every code that we, all the code that we, we write just works for everybody and so forth and so forth. And you see, that is fucking easy to say when you don't have to implement it. That is so easy to stand up there like a politician or some person who's never done a hard day's labor in their entire life and say that we're going to do that. But you see, in actuality what it means is that if you were to say, take the stance that you know my company we're going to be about accessibility and we're going to make sure that our websites works without javascript or we're going to support the oldest browsers that sort of thing then the you would increase the workload and the, especially the testing like the, the 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 amount of work that has to go into doing something like that is enormous it is fucking enormous. We're talking about something that most companies, honest to God, and this is just me telling you what I've seen so many, many times. This is the sort of, this is one of those convenient white lies that most people will say. Everybody will say the same thing, basically that, oh yeah, of course we care about, uh, care about accessibility. Of course we care about that, you know, everybody should be able to work, use our products and so forth. But the reality is that if you're stretched for a deadline or if your co developers come and say, hey, you know what, we need to test this for people with a, with a, like a sight impediment or something like that and use screen readers and stuff like that. And then the PO says, hey, okay, uh, how long, how much extra time is that gonna take? Oh, well, uh, probably a day or two at least per story. Then they're gonna, gonna go, uh, okay, but there's only really, like a really, really small percentage of people that use our website that has this sort of issue and I mean, maybe they can make do and like, because th this is something that is not that value building for the company. So if you're going to build websites with the idea that, oh, they should work without JavaScript and with JavaScript, the complexity of your product will go up in an enormous amount. Yes. Think about it like, and the same thing goes through the design perspective. So all your designers are now going to have to think about with JavaScript, without JavaScript, also that you're not even going to be able to make them understand the differences. Like unless you literally have developers or like, I don't know, developers who are designers at the same time, like just educating designers who are most, in my opinion, unless they're web designers, usually struggling with just understanding how the web works. To make them understand with and without JavaScript and what's possible and what's not possible, make like it's an entire educational piece. And maybe if you are Mozilla, or you are Google, or you are Facebook, where you have traffic where literally you have such even even the small percentages that represent people who don't have access to JavaScript or so forth, or rather, I'm not saying that these are small percentages, I'm just saying that maybe if you are a global worldwide super site that has people coming in from all kinds of directions and you calculate that, you know, actually investing in making sure that this works without JavaScript or that it's truly accessible and things of this nature is actually going to be a good return on investment because that's what it comes, that is at the end of the day what it comes down to unless you are an ideological association or organization such as Mozilla then it comes down to money. That's what it comes down to. How fast do you want to ship and how much are you going to invest in order to ship that thing? Return on investment, guys. That's what it's about. And if you calculate that you actually are going to make money from making these sorts of considerations, even though it's going to slow down your development process and increase testing by quite a few times fold, then sure, let's go for it. 
The other perspective we can have on this is that yes, your, your site should work without JavaScript if let's say for the sake of argument you work for the government where the, it's not so important that you have a very short time to market. It's important that every single case is covered, that every single person who goes to that website has the ability to partake in the information on that website. I mean, imagine if you're creating a website for the welfare system or the medical system or something like that, then you have to think about accessibility in some fashion and you have to consider the case that some, or rather, I'm not saying that you always have to because I'm pretty sure that even the government sometimes and agencies that create these websites may or may not, it, it's a, I, I, I'm not convinced that every single government site out there is going to work without JavaScript and that every site is going to work with, for every country is going to be accessible for people with screen readers and so forth. Because it is something that can even, and this is horrible to say as well, but it, honest to God, it's actually also possible to fix that from the other perspective. You can take the stance that, well, a person who needs a screen reader may or may not have access to a person who can help them figure this out. That's not, of course not always the case, but it is a very feasible argument you could give yourself to justify that you're not going to do accessibility testing or accessibility on the website. Same thing goes for JavaScript. You could say that, well, I mean, almost everybody uses JavaScript and if you don't have access to JavaScript, well, every print month, every browser has access to this in some fashion. And sure, you might be in a part of the world where, or in an organization where you're not allowed for some reason to enable it. Well, there's you should, like there's no legal restriction here. So maybe you can wait to access our content when you're on a device that has a browser that is enabling JavaScript. The same thing goes for new and old browsers. Is it cheaper? It's cheaper for the company to say that we're just supporting the, a few ranges of versions back in time and have people basically upgrade their browsers rather than trying to cater to the lowest denominator or the, the people who still are for some reason not upgrading their browsers to newer and better versions, right? So what I want you to take away from this is that if you are working in an environment where you truly know that it will make a real difference if you have a progressive website, that you have people who actually depend on the fact that it needs to work without JavaScript or that you need accessibility and things of this nature, this is exceedingly rare. It is really, really rare that you would find yourself in this sort of situation. It's actually so rare that, as I've, as I said, most companies just say that they kind of think about this thing. But my guess is that you will go most of your career without really learning all of the intricate details about accessibility and how to do progressive enhancement on web pages and so forth. I mean, especially if you're working in like React land or Angular or Vue or so forth. It's uh, it's a very nice thought, but the only people who seem to have the luxury to push it as if it's a religious thing that everybody should do are the people who are not actually just another company. They're either Mozilla, like a, like a public organization, or they're one of the super companies who basically actually make money to, to the extent that they will gain from having these considerations because most companies will not actually get a return on investment for doing this. Have a great day.